installed on Monday as Ross Ball Professor at Cambridge, known for his elegant lectures, Timothy Gowers needs no introduction. An immense intellect, analyst, and commendatorist, he receives the Field Medals in 1998 in Berlin. He's currently a CMI Prize Fellow. Timothy Gowers will speak today on l'importance des mathématiques. It is with some disbelief that I stand here and prepare to address this gathering on the subject of the importance of mathematics. For a start, it is an extraordinary honor to be invited to give the keynote address at a millennium meeting in Paris. Secondly, giving a lecture on the significance of mathematics demands wisdom, judgment, and maturity. And there are many mathematicians far better endowed than I am with these qualities, including several in this audience. I hope, therefore, that you will understand that my thoughts are not fully formed. If I had been asked to speak on this subject five years ago, I would have given a completely different lecture, and I am confident that in five years' time it would again have changed. My title, which I did not actually choose myself, though I willingly agreed to it, also places on me a great burden of responsibility. After all, I am speaking to an audience which contains not just mathematicians, but journalists and other influential non-mathematicians. If I fail to convince you that mathematics is important and worthwhile, I will be letting down the mathematical community and also letting down Mr. Clay, whose generosity has made this event possible and is benefiting mathematics in many other ways as well. Unfortunately, if one surveys in a superficial way the vast activity of mathematicians around the world, it is easy to come away with the impression that mathematics is not actually all that important. The percentage of the world's population, or even of the world's university-educated population, who could accurately state a single mathematical theorem proved in the last 50 years is small, and smaller still if Fermat's last theorem is excluded. <laughs> if you ask a mathematician to explain what he or she works on, you will usually be met with a sheepish grin and told that it is not possible to do so in a, in a short time. If you ask whether this mysteriously complicated work has practical applications, and we all get asked this from time to time, then there are various typical responses, not always all that impressive. One is the line taken by the famous Cambridge mathematician G. H. Hardy, who was perfectly content, indeed almost proud, that his chosen field, number theory, had no applications, either then or in the foreseeable future. For him, the main criterion of mathematical worth was beauty. At the other end of the spectrum, there are mathematicians who work in areas such as theoretical computer science, financial mathematics, or statistics, areas of acknowledged practical importance. Mathematicians in these areas can point to ideas that have had a big impact, such as the black skulls equation for derivative pricing, which has transformed the operation of the financial markets, and the public key crypto system invented by Rivest, Shamir, and Edelman, which is now the basis for security on the internet, and which, as has been pointed out many times, is an application of number theory that Hardy certainly did not expect. Also at the applied end of the spectrum, there are many mathematicians whose work has intimate connections with theoretical physics. Actually, it's not obvious that something like unifying general relativity and quantum mechanics would have direct practical applications, since today's physics already provides us with predictions that are accurate to within the limits we can measure, but one never knows and in any case, such a breakthrough would be of absolutely fundamental interest to science, and indeed to anybody with the slightest intellectual curiosity. If mathematicians can make a contribution here, then they would at least be able to point to a huge external application of mathematics. Most mathematicians, including me, lie somewhere in the middle of the spectrum when it comes to our attitude to applications. We would be delighted if we proved a theorem that was found to be useful outside mathematics, but we do not actively seek to do so. Given the choice between an interesting but purely mathematical problem and an uninteresting problem of potential benefit to engineers, computer scientists, or physicists, we will opt for the former, but we would certainly feel awkward if nobody worked on practical problems. Actually, this attitude is held even by many of those who work in more practical-seeming areas. 
If you press such a person asking for a specific example of an application in business, industry or science of their own work, as opposed to an application of a result in their general area, you will often, though not invariably, witness an uncomfortable reaction. It turns out that a great deal of the research in even the so-called practical areas is in fact not practical at all. I'm not trying to draw attention to some sort of scandal by saying this, as I hope to demonstrate this phenomenon is a natural and desirable consequence of what it means to view the world mathematically. The reason for it is that mathematics is a two-stage process. Rather than studying the world directly, mathematicians create so-called models of the world and study them. This applies even to the simplest mathematics. After the age of four or five, we do not study addition by actually combining groups of objects and counting them. Instead, we use an abstract mathematical construction, or model, known as the positive integers, that is, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Similarly, we do not do basic geometry by cutting shapes out of paper, partly because it is not necessary, and partly because in any case the resulting shapes would not be exact squares, triangles, or whatever they were supposed to be. Once again, we study a model, a sort of idealized world that contains things that we do not come across in everyday life, such as infinitely thin lines that stretch away to infinity, or absolutely perfect circles. Moreover, it does not contain untidy worldly things like chairs, or human beings, or hamburgers. If one works in a practical area of mathematics, then there will be two conflicting criteria for what makes a good model. On the one hand, the model should be accurate enough to be useful, and on the other, it should be simple and elegant enough to generate realistic and interesting mathematical problems. It is tempting, as a mathematician, to attach far more importance to the second criterion, mathematical interest and elegance, than to the first, accuracy, even if this means not immediately contributing to the gross national product of one's country. I'd like to give a, a quick example of this, um, which does come from theoretical computer science. Uh, so I shall just discuss quite a well-known uh, problem. What I've got here is a, a network, or what mathematicians would call a graph. So the network contains various, uh, you can call them nodes or vertices, whatever you like. And um, the problem associated with this network, or at least the problem I'd initially like to discuss, is, is it possible to colour in these circles here with two colours, let's say uh, red and blue, in such a way that you never have the same colour joined by one of these lines, 